Fuck YouTube, Twitter, Friends of Prince, or SoundCloud, SoundClick. <clears throat> That's another excerpt of <laughs> why not to move to Atlanta. Don't move to Atlanta, but it's up to you because it all depends on what your financial situation is. It, your financial situation. Depends on who your friends are, if you have any. I didn't have any uh, when I went down there. And my financial situation wasn't that great. But I wanted to talk about the housing market. Uh, so, okay. So here's what, you know, and it's been a while since I've been in Atlanta. But the reason why I'm talking about it is because it was different than anywhere else I've ever been uh, or uh, anywhere else I've lived, you know, because I'm sure New York is along the same lines. Okay, so when I went down there uh, to live in Atlanta, I worked for two temporary jobs, and I'll do a, a whole thing on a job situation, but I worked for two temporary jobs, and when I went down there, I had to, I lived with my sister at the time, and my sister and I didn't get along, uh, and uh, then she told me I had to leave, which was fine, so this started my uh, a journey into looking for an apartment. Now, you just can't you look in the paper and say, this apartment here is where I want to go. And, you know, like you can where I live now. You look for apartments, blah, blah, blah. You have to have some type of real estate uh, personnel management to step in and actually uh, pitch the property to you. And um, which is really crazy. It's like, why is the middleman there? You know, why are we paying for this? But um, so basically... I found some apartments where I wanted to live and, you know, I called up the agency or whoever they are and they, they ran down a whole list or apartment management, whatever. They run down a whole list of places that are available within the geographical area that you've chosen. Uh, I forgot the street or the avenue that I lived on. It was a uh, main, uh, whole main uh, street there. I forgot what it was. But um, nonetheless, I moved into a two-bedroom apartment, and I paid $600, $600 for that apartment. But where I moved from and where I live now, not at the same apartment, but my rent was not even close to that. It was like 300 something So my rent pretty much doubled <laughs> when I moved to Atlanta and that was years ago so I could only think that it's uh you know either doubled or tripled now you know eight to nine hundred dollars probably even more than that but the problem is that you got to go through this whole property management just to get the spot and when you leave you got to go through them so it's just a hassle that I don't want to go through you know when I tell people you know I don't for one I don't tell people don't move to Atlanta I say, you know, just be aware of some of the things that you're going to have to deal with when you want to, you know, get a job there, when you want to, you know, actually live there, you know, when you want to bring your family down there. And, you know, some people are like, I moved to Atlanta with 150 bucks. You know, I didn't have a lot of money either. Matter of fact, I'd, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I had about that. But I had, you know, I had my sister. You know what I'm saying? I moved down there. I lived with her and um, near the mall, near one of them uh, malls, because I used to always ride my bike down to the mall. That's another thing. I never got a vehicle when I lived in Atlanta. Never not once. I didn't want one. Because this is when I first figured out that you could ride a bike and pretty much put your bike on the front of the bus and go everywhere you wanted. And that's exactly what I did. I rode my bicycle everywhere and i had a great time because you know it's not that cold in the world it wasn't it wasn't that cold so i had this leather jacket that i would you know put a scarf around my neck and then boom and then i put the scarf around my face now i'm gonna tell you what's dangerous about that the assholes who are driving so i'm biking it you know and this guy sees me some you know, he's a black guy this guy sees me, you know, biking it, so he slows down his car as if he was going to attempt to hit me. And I'm looking at this dude like, 
what's like what's wrong with you like going about your business but yes i was a grown man biking around atlanta and i tell you what i had a great time from five points to buckhead i went to all of those places on my bike it was great but the whole real estate thing i think is unnecessary i think it's a pitfall and i think you know it's just the landlords are being lazy, so they're paying these people, you know, to find property for them or whatever they're doing. But um, it's not something I don't want to go through. I don't want to be on, you know, I don't want to have to wait to talk to a person about me paying them money to live in their spot. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But I just wanted to share that experience with you guys because it can be nerve wracking and uh, they could try to make you seem like you're not worthy to live in a certain place and you know it's like you guys are no better than anybody else you just make more money so get out of here with that worthy if i have the money and this is where i choose to live why not take my money so you're gonna run into that you're gonna run into people who do not want you to live near them simply because of some racial issue uh, but most of the time, uh, of course, it's financial. But if you can afford to live there, uh, some people might not want you there because you have kids. They might not want you in that neighborhood because you have a bunch of kids. Like, it's real, people. You know, it's very real. I had one lady, this wasn't in Atlanta, but I had one lady. She wouldn't let me move into uh, one of her apartment complexes or whatever it was simply because I was black. And she said, because the neighbors wouldn't like it. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> so, anyways, I just want to throw that out there. It's your boy Tone to a two. Peace. God bless you.